guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back with another review. Back in the toothpick classes we are. We've got the Beta FPV HX115 HD edition this time. A little bit of ups and downs. Some interesting things this was. It was a little bit more difficult for me to review. Um, yeah, we'll get into it. it was a, it's a great quad. I would recommend this to anyone. But let's get into it. You can make the decision for yourself. Hey guys, welcome to the bench. Let's have a look at the box that we got this quad in. This is the HX series from Beta FPV. It's in the toothpick class. They call it a toothpick drone. Technically, that's a little bit of a question mark for me still these days because I believe Kebab makes a toothpick, but he created the toothpick class of drone. So the box is pretty plain, nothing really fancy, no real inscriptions. If we open it up inside, you get the drone, but since I've flown it and put the props on and did a little bit of modifications, that's out of the box already. In the box also, we got a bag with uh, tri-blade props and two blade props with all the screws you need to attach it. I went ahead and bought some extra props because who doesn't need extra props when testing a product? You get a little connection cable for the camera control and a little camera control board. So it's the camera control board with the cable so you can plug that onto the flight controller. And then that's used to adjust your camera settings, brightness and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's what we got in the box. Nothing too fancy little beta FPV card with contact information, QR codes so that you can register your product on the website maybe for some support. There's a user manual on there and you can join the beta FPV community. Box aside, little snippets aside, props there. The tri-blades they recommend only for 3S because of these 5,000 kV motors on 4S you'll be really pushing that those ESCs to the limits and with tri-blades I'm afraid you might blow them I personally wouldn't considering how this thing rocks with the two by blades you get the 3x2 HQ props on here these things are like the perfect toothpick prop in my opinion now if I had to quickly get into some of the little modifications I had to do it comes with a dipole antenna, great toothpick class, don't need to fly 10Ks over a mountain range or anything, but this dipole was loose and it would be no trouble at all to be able to get that dipole caught in the props. So all I did was take a little bit of insulation tape, wrapped it around the canopy and uh, yeah, so suddenly I've got the dipole nice up in the air, better reception and it's tucked away safe didn't add any extra weight was no problem the other little modification i did was cable tie the battery strap to the arm because the way it comes out the box you've got the, the battery leads that come straight off the fc that's never good for when you eject the battery um, you never want to tug straight onto your your flight controller so i just added a little cable tie there to hold that down or to at least get relieve the pressure when you when you do crash and the battery ejects and then the last thing the two antenna for your receiver they were also just flapping around not really fastened to anything i did a little cable tie this is probably a little over the top and unnecessary adding extra weight and just heat shrink that down but i feel it's a lot more protected that way and it'll last a lot longer Further than that, there was nothing I had to do, besides on the tune, but we'll get to that when we look at the flight footage. This little thing rocks. It is well constructed. I love the fact that the standoff and the stack is not the same standoffs as that of the... Often you see the canopy is on the same stack as the flight controller. That makes a big difference for me to be able to have the canopy on a separate standoff than that of, of the flight controller. It insulates it, but also when you crash, the canopy takes a beating and you don't want your stack taking a beating because of that. The canopy is supposed to protect it. So for me, it just makes a whole lot more sense the way they've done this. Um, that really is a thumbs up. And then the stack is also hard mounted. That's what's new with Butterfly, with Butterfly 4. It's not so crucial anymore as it used to be. 
So those are proper little standoffs right there, not these plastic little gummies. This stack is mounted in here properly. And because of the HX, you've got the micro turtle, or the nano turtle in here. So you've got your HD recording. Uh, if I can find the slot, you've got your slot right there for the SD card that you can shove in there. It's got nice, what I like about it, it's got that little plastic cover to hold your SD card so it doesn't get lost. I'll snap some pictures of that on the screen, it's a bit hard to show in the video. Um, yeah, and the camera quality is pretty good, I was pretty impressed. I flew this thing at some pretty low light conditions and I was quite impressed. It held up, when I took the goggles off I thought to myself, geez, it's much darker outside the goggles than in the goggles, so low light performance, pretty good. We'll get into more of the details in the next clip where I take a rundown of the specs. But uh, overall, very happy. This quad really flies well. We'll get to the one thing that I really think they should look at when out the box, and it's just tune related. I had some serious oscillations, especially above 40% on the throttle. And this was a bit of a downer for me. You want something like this, you want to give it to a beginner, you want them to take it out the box, put their goggles and fly without caring for anything. And that's what I said, it makes it a bit difficult for me to review these types of or things like this because this is sold as a quick plug it in and fly, bind it to your receiver and there you go, no problems. And now you have to tune, great, we all do need to learn to tune, not a problem, but for this form factor, for this, the way they've sold it, everything in the box, I don't want to tune a quad. I want to give this to someone who's getting into FPV, who doesn't know how to tune, and he must just have a blast of a time. And that's what's awesome about the toothpick class. These things can take a beating and they are relatively cheap to fix. I mean, if you crash your 5 inch the way you crash these toothpicks, you're going to be replacing parts every time. And these things just keep going. Something else that was nice, this strap. It's a proper battery strap. It's not just those little semi little catch, almost a cable tie situation or elastic band. It's a thin, proper battery strap. You can really pull it down and they've even gone so far as to give you a little sticky pad underneath it. That's small touches like these that takes this quad from meh all the way up to this is, feels a little bit more premium. Feels great and this unibody T700 carbon is awesome. This stuff is tough. You wouldn't think that something that thin could be this stuff but man this carbon is amazingly well done. And small touches like chamfering on the edges. There's no sharp edges to cut yourself or to get any carbon fire splinters in your fingers. This little frame is really well designed and the finishing is great. 9 out of 10 for that. I really do like that a lot. They've opted to go with a plug-in motor configuration onto the ESC, so no soldering. Yeah, that's again coming back to, I want to give this to a newbie in the, in the sport. I want him to not have to struggle. Someone who maybe doesn't know how to solder yet, he wants to learn to fly, wants to get in the hobby. Great, go for the plug-in. Toothpick class, not have all that complexity and the other things that you have to consider when doing 5 inch and bigger. So, no problem with that, I love it. They've done a lot of things right just on the tune. Man, we need to get rid of those mid, to mid oscillations. But that's nothing major. So overall, I really, really like this thing. Let's check out some good flight footage. I wouldn't say good flight footage, but some flight footage. And then we'll get back to the bench and then we'll run through the specs and you guys can see what this is. Give me your comments. I would like to hear what you guys think of the Toothpick HX. 115 HD series. It's awesome for me that we're finally at a time where we can do HD recording on something this small in this tiny form factor. Great job, better FPV. I love it. We'll get back to you guys after the flights and we'll run through the specs. Check you guys later.
Right guys, we're back from the field. There was some great testing. Now we can quickly run through some of the specs and the spec sheet for this little guy. It really impressed me. Afterwards, I'll quickly talk about it and give my recommendation. Um, if we look at it, we've got the Beta FPV 5000 KV 1105 motors. They're nice and notchy. I think these are the perfect motors for the toothpick range. These things are really great. They've got enough punch, but they don't take too much power, so you get good flight times, and they've got enough punch for the toothpick loss. With something this small, you really don't need to get all that much speed and overpower. I mean, if you're really gonna race toothpick class, maybe then I'd swap out the motor. But for freestyle, cruising around, flying around trees, this is great. We've got the ABS canopy. This is the molded one. So much better than the previous ones, which was some vacuum formed, or I'm not sure how they made them before, but this is an injection molded canopy. Really, really great. Inside, underneath, FC and the ESC is a toothpick F4. It's rated for 2 to 4 S with a 12 amp ESC on a toothpick. That's that, that's that's awesome. I'm really glad they did that. It's an all-in-one EFC, FC, ESC stack. So yeah, maybe that's something that'll change. But to get the weight down, that's perfect. The frame is obviously the HX115 with some T700 carbon fiber. If I pull out my vernier, we can check the zero that out. And then on a toothpick to have a four millimeter flat frame. That's really, really, really awesome. Um, and also I must just reiterate, them chamfering the edges has really added that touch of finesse. I really love what they've done with it. It's really awesome. The receiver options, you get it in F4 Sky, XM Plus, the SMX for two bar, even on a TBS Crossfire and Fly Sky. You buy these just as they are. The camera is of course the Cadex Micro Turtle or yeah the Baby Turtle sorry I keep saying Micro but it's the Baby Turtle it's a low weight the camera and the the recording boards it comes in at a 9 grams it's a half inch 1.27 inch CMOS sensor the resolution is an 800 TVL and it gives you 1080p 30fps recording on the front here, we've got a 1.8 millimeter lens and a field of view of 170. This allows you to record in both NTSC and PAL as most of the things do, and it records it out on an MP4. Aspect ratio is 6943, interchangeable in the OSD. I love the fact that they've got smart audio enabled, and that allows you to switch between your 25 and 200 milliwatt output powers on your VTX. And uh, yeah, it supports up to a 64 gig card. The low light was a little bit lacking, but on something this small, I don't blame it. Who really wants to fly this at night? We all do. <laughs> um, the, WD, the wide dynamic range was pretty good. It didn't struggle. I was able to see as far as I was able to fly. The Cadex, Baby Turtle, I think that's going to be one of the contenders. Obviously, there's the Fox here and the Run Cam that are also in the same battle for the same thing. I like that they've got the XT30s already plugged in. And the battery strap again, what a bonus. Many of the micros don't have that. What else is there to say? Great little quad, awesome. Final thoughts, if, we can, if they can just get it out the box without any jitters and jumps and those vibrations. So just get it down on the tune, awesome. Maybe do a little something on the antenna to protect it a little bit from the props. Something like this is very jimmy rigged, not the best solution in my opinion. I'm sure they can come up with something more elegant than that. And maybe just a little cable tie to tie down the battery leads. That's my final thoughts. I would give this to a noob. Really great starter frame. 9 out of 10 from me. Awesome frame. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any comments, if you've bought one, you've flown it, please chat with us. We would like, always love to hear the comments of other people, other opinions. People have maybe had better experiences, worse experiences. Let us know. Interact with us. See you guys soon. Thanks guys.